Do you have some days in your life where you don't know what to do with the time? So today is a day like that for me and I'm pretty sure like most of you like that because uh, we can sleep the time you usually we used to sleep and uh, time like goes like weird because uh, all, all the days like these days uh, let me share my screen can can you see my screen and can you hear me uh, sorry I was on a mute kind of a weird uh, dialogues all the time you know these days so I was going through my uh, messages and uh, mails then I got few questions you guys asked so I decided to do this video so um, I hope you guys are safe and um, healthy uh, during this pandemic crazy pandemic so anyway so uh, after watching my uh, SSH and Ansible and those videos a lot of you guys were asking how I do this uh, practical like because whenever I want I can create a machine it's an empty machine just with operating system it doesn't have anything installed within that and also like if you if I like messed up with that I just delete that machine and I create a new machine that again has a fresh uh, operating system everything and I always have a public IP where I can uh, call from anywhere how I can do these things so I decided to uh, do a few videos where uh, you teach you how to create a data center on a cloud so you can do all those experiments and practical things uh, on your learning curve also the most important thing it's you can do that for free so I'm going to teach you that but before I teach you that there are some basic fundamental principles you need to understand uh, depend on uh, to in, uh, come into this uh, cloud data centers so if you I don't know when did you start this uh, software engineering journey if you happen to start like 10 years back uh, if you need a server you had no option other than the buying a physical server right so it's a giant uh, physical box you have to buy that for example I, I still remember I had a friend called uh, Susit and Susit and I, and I went to a, a meeting and there we discussed a system and uh, we needed like five or six servers right so a few months later when we go, go into that same office to implement that we had a giant server room with uh, like five or six server boxes right for application server, database server, proxy, mail server, firewalls, for everything we uh, happened to buy a, a separate physical server but that was that time. So then, so that's, that's a physical time. So then we came up a period called VM. So what the VM did is we just take a one uh, machine and you create a virtualization within that machine, maybe hypervisor or something and then you create separate virtual machine uh, inside that. So that like kind of uh, uh, evolution but it carried uh, certain problems right we discussed this before in uh, some other video so I'm not going to deeper that. So there's a third generation like a 2.5 generation from this VM we decided to move everything to cloud right. So we decided to move everything to cloud because here's the problem if you if you need to manage the data center that's not easy let's let's think so this is your data center all right so this data center may running like five six probably ten servers right so that much of servers generate heat so you need a separate air condition and then you need a uh, internet connection right then what happened if the service provider has some problem right maybe uh, he gets some problem and he cannot provide internet then your entire data center goes offline so you have to have a redundant internet connection right so and then physical security and then uh, how to manage these uh, logs and the files and the archives and also like who access which server when and uh, keeping the physical access is, is kind of a headache right to maintain a physical data center is a headache so and more than that especially uh, if you don't have a reliable internet connection and if the connection is expensive then it's not cost effective too. So running a physical data center it's kind of a uh, time, money, effort, everything is it's hard to find and also you need to find some um, resources where they, uh, you can manage this data center right. So therefore after like this second generation it was kind of 2.5 generation there's nothing but you just ship this into cloud right 
So there we can create a data center in the cloud. So that is the what we are going to talk about today. So but today video I am not going to teach anything technical. I am I'm going to give you this background and a basic and I am going to tell you how you can create a data center right. From the next video onwards I am going to uh, teach you how to configure implement and make it work like as your usual data center. You can you can uh, think like you have a giant data center at your home. How cool it is. Okay. So let us create a data center at your home or office right. So just think this is your data center right so probably you with your, your your room for this so called data center right for this data center you need internet connection why because you have to connect with outside the world right you may need to call other services other systems need to talk to you so you get the internet connection right so this is your router people call this a router doesn't matter what it is right so let's your isp give you internet all right so now you have let's say now you have five different machines right one two three four five right so probably mail servers probably um, data servers or whatever you have five different servers right so now you get this and from here you give internet connection for these machines right so these machines are connected to let's say other switch right and you give internet to this switch so now all this can go outside right so but also there's a scenario maybe you decide these three should not open to the internet probably those are data database or some uh, security uh, related servers so you don't want to expose these to internet right so what you can do is you can create a network separate network for this right and separate network for this right so we call this as a private subnet and this will be public subnet right so you have a two different subnets now in uh, in here so um, so this subnet has internet this subnet don't have internet right so now what you do is these servers can talk to these servers inter to the internal network but they don't expose to outside right so this is coined as a data center right so this is a data center for your office or like kind of a home right so now we are going to ship this data center into cloud right so when you ship this data center into cloud what I am going to do is I am going to draw this I am going to draw this same data center on the cloud and explain you how that name goes right. So I am going to take this as a AWS AWS data center but nothing different if you uh, choose other provider like a Google it names are almost same right. So what I am going to do is in the cloud I get an account okay in the cloud I get an account and I create my data center right so we don't call this as a data center we give a special name called VPC virtual private cloud right so in your day in your account uh, with AWS you can create a number of data centers right a number of VPCs right so in a VPC now you are going to make this scenario right so you are going to get you are going to get internet gateway right so you are going to get internet gateway right internet gateway so who's that this is your internet provider right so if you you talk to your internet provider uh, from your home and they say I, I want internet connection likewise you can get the internet uh, from internet gateway to your VPC right and like like this one you can create any number of subnets right you can create any number of subnets now these subnets these subnets connect to something called routing table right this subnet has a something called routing table right so people call routing table so whatever right I'm going to explain this in detail but just for now this is a routing table so here in this routing table we are going to tell if okay now before that 
we have to have a machine, right? So now, in terms of AWS, right? So here you have a tree. These are called EC2 instances, right? EC2 instances, right? Elastic computing. So this EC2 instances, this is kind of a new machine. That's what you have seen. I just spawn a new one. I get the IP address and everything. So this is this one. Any EC2 instance are belong to a subnet, right? So subnet is belongs to a VPC, right? So now in this routing table, routing table are attached to subnet, right? So in this routing table, we tell if anyone trying to access go somewhere, right? And route them into the VPC. So it is uh, VPC and the subnet has uh, some IP blocks. I'm going to explain that level later. But for now here, in this uh, routing table, it tells if anyone trying to go to this VPC's address block. Let's say my VPC address block is 10.0.0.0.16, right? So 16 is what? In this IP address, these last two can change, right? So that can be 10.0. Maybe uh, 10. Dot something, 11. Dot something, the 12. Dot something. That means simply these two uh, blocks can be changed, right? So you need to be aware about a little bit IP addressing and the subnet mask, right? So now we can tell if anyone, any of these EC2 instances, try to access something, right? Uh, starting with the 10.0, right, and route them internally, right. If not, if not, let's say for example, if someone is trying to access any other IP address, send them to Internet Gateway, right, send them to Internet Gateway. In that way, uh, EC2 instances are here who get the Internet, right. So now, we don't add this rule into this routing table, so this uh, this subnet will not get the internet, right? So we can produce the same scenario, right? Here in the data center. So now we have one-to-one -one mapping. This is our uh, in-house uh, local data center, on-prem data center, and this is the matching cloud data center, right? So now I'm going to talk little more detail about our cloud data center, right? because there are some more terminologies you need to aware in order to get this work, right? So now I'm directly drawing my uh, cloud data center. Okay, so these are my subnets. Okay, so now these are uh, EC2 instances, right? So this is E1 and this is E2, right? So now we learn this subnet, right? So for example, in this example, let's assume so IP address of this 10.0.0.0 16 and this subnet is 10.0.81.0.0 24, right? So that means this subnet uh, can have any IP address by but first three is fixed and last one can be changed, right? So now what happens is this subnet has something called so now this subnet has something called knuckle, right? Right. So network access control is there something called knuckle. So what knuckle does is knuckle control who can access this subnet. Right. What are the ports available to access in the subnet. So apart from the knuckle in these instances protected with something called security group. Right. To do something called security group. So that means if you want to control which port, which source IP addresses can access your uh, computer, your instance you're creating here, it can protect by two layers. One is a knuckle, 
one is a security group. So whenever I explain this, the most common question uh, people ask, why you have to have a two different gates? Here is why. Let's say E1 is a FTP server, right? E2 is a web server, okay? So since both are in same subnet, in the knuckle, we need to whitelist FTP ports and the HTTP ports, right? But since this is a FTP server, you don't need to, if this, this server, you don't need to allow FTP ports, right? So from the security group, you can block FTP, right? And here, this is the FTP, uh, sorry, I miss, I, I changed it a different way. So let's say this is a web server and this is a FTP server. And for here, you can block web traffic to this EC2 instance, right? You don't need to allow web traffic over there, right? So, I mean, uh, this is, uh, I mean, we, we have to do this a little more detail, practical, but I just want to give a concept, right? So now we learn VPC, so this is the VPC. This is the subnet, right? And this is the EC2 instance. And a subnet has something called knuckle, network access control list, which controls the security, right? And each machine has something called um, security group. So where that can protect, that can uh, do some other more whitelisting, right? So now what you need to do is, you need to, I'm, I'm going to put the links down below you can go to this uh, link and you can create your own account, right? So this is completely free for one year, but with the following conditions. In your account, there are things which tag as a free tier, right? I'm going to show you in the next video. There are things which tag as a free tier. So those things you can access free, right? You won't get charged for accessing those. But in case if you access which is not tagged as a free tier, you will, you will get bill, right? But to learn, do all the practicals and uh, do all the th uh, things what I do in these videos, is a free tier is more than enough, right? So this free tier is allowed to one complete year for free. They won't, they won't charge. But keep in mind, there are few conditions apply. One is you have a certain number of hours, right? When you create an account, you can go and check that. For example, you have you can have EC2 instances 700 hours per month, right? So what you just need to do is, if you don't use that, you can keep it uh, shut down. So then it won't get charged for those hours, right? I mean, it, those hours won't get count, right? So the hours are the hours which your instance are really running, right? Another requirement is to create this account, you must have a credit card, valid credit or debit card, right? Credit card is easy. You have to have a valid Visa, Master, or whatever the credit card available, right? I mean, as there are certain banks, it depends on the countries, country you lived in, and uh, there are certain bank support. You can deposit some money and get a, a Visa card for a certain period of time. So whatever the way, you have to have a you have to have a credit card, right? So now what you can do is if you have a credit card and if you're ready, go to this link, create an account and then you will get access to Amazon uh, AWS cloud, right? So then in the next video, I'm going to teach you how to create this VPC and the subnet and the routers and the doll data centers and everything, right? And here onwards, you can do your Ansible, SSH or whatever the practicals you need to do because anytime you can just need to select operating system. What is operating system? How many number of processors you want? And you create account. Boom! You have a, you have a comp you have a server with the publicly callable IP address. That's with the real IP, right? So you can call from anywhere, right? So it's just a one minute task. You can create any number of instances as you want, and those are free for one year. But collectively, limited number of hours. But that's more than enough to learn. Okay, so then we'll see you in the next video. Go ahead and uh, create this account right now if you have a credit card. Otherwise, just uh, somehow manage to get to create an account. And then from next video, you can continue to learn to create your own data center on AWS. See you soon. Stay safe. Take care.